probably know the genesis of this bill, and it was an addendum attached on to the last budget. It was extremely contentious, and we actually had it redacted, and then uh, the politics of it fell apart, and it was one of those, eh, you, kind of things, so we got sort of stuck with it. Uh, I think that they'll, that they'll have a very hard time continuing it. I think at some point we'll be able to roll it back so that the good faith effort still works. We'll keep trying. We'll keep trying. Yeah. The good faith effort is still the process for DBE, UDBE. Um, Caltrans has not changed that. Um, it's the disabled veteran business that has gone from a good faith effort to mandates. So, yes. Uh, we've been Caltrans projects and uh, we ran into one of them. We had done our good faith effort and then we received a fax from Caltrans or an email from Caltrans listing uh, UDB contractors. And we called the Department of General Services and they said that we must contact all the people on that list to complete our good faith effort. Is that going to be happening on all Caltrans jobs now? You know, I couldn't tell you. I don't know. Uh, I do know that we had a, um, a consultant who were creating the DBE, DBE uh, spreadsheets and uh, a lot of information that contractors were getting when they pulled the plans or when they got were bidding. Um, and that contract um, ceased to be funded recently. So, um, we don't have a contractor looking, and, and that contractor was actually finding, or calling the DBEs and UDBEs and getting a yes or no, are they interested or not interested, and the only ones that were on those spreadsheets were people who said, yes, we are willing to meet some contractors. So, uh, but unfortunately, that contract, um, our funding ran out on that, so we don't have that consultant working anymore. But, but I don't know. I don't know um, how the process is going to be. Um, one of the things, the pamphlet, Caltrans Quick Reference Information for Contractors, there are phone numbers um, for office engineer and DGS, and uh, if you have those specific questions, give them a call. Sometimes by the time it filters to me, it's old news, but um, hopefully these guys should have up-to-date, perfect information for you. So there's nothing in the works that's going to take away the good faith effort. At this point, it's it's static. It's as is. It's what it used to be. Right. So there is a good faith effort. Um, and we are very aware that we are a rather geographically isolated, homogeneous district. And it's difficult to find a lot of firms that meet the qualifications for these, these businesses. So, you know, we, we are still on the good faith effort on, on those processes. Yeah. Yes? How does this affect the small businesses? None whatsoever. Her question was, how does it affect the small business, uh, certified small businesses bidding on, as a prime? No. The, you know, if you're going to bid a job, yeah, if you're a DVBE or a small business and you're bidding the job as a prime, you don't have to meet a goal because you are that goal. You are them. Yeah, so, do we have any DVBEs in the room? You aren't. So yes, we need to have a, a, a speed dating process. Yeah, yes. yeah. Robin and I will work on speed dating. We'll yeah, but we'll only get invited really cute. <laughs> <laughs> so um, actually, no, and there was a DBBE guy that was really here for a lot of years, and he was a terrible contractor. So just being, you know, a disabled veteran doesn't make you a world's best contractor either. That's the other side of that. Right. Well, we all know businesses that are good, bad, or and they can be prime, they can be subs, they can be the same. You got a lot of work. You know, you wouldn't have yeah. gotten in a regular competitive market. Right. Right. We so. got a bid. Esco got a bid um, last bid. It was really rather interesting because they had quite a few company names that they went under. 
But at the bottom, it said that the guy had done eight tours in Iraq and Afghanistan that owned that uh, company. But he was not DVDE. So he, unfortunately for him, had not been wounded in combat. <laughs> um, and he only hired uh, veterans to work for him. And I thought, isn't that a shame? Because in a minute, I would take him, even if his uh, bid was slightly higher, if there was something that said, hey, you know, you don't have to be hurt when you go over there. You just have to serve your country. Yeah. And because it was really an amazing little biography of uh, um, who that company was on the bottom. Well, hopefully of he um, is a certified small business and he can yeah. use it that he, way. But I didn't see any certification, yeah. but it did say non dvbe after he said how many joints of duty. Any other questions? I kind of quickly went over these, this process, the different processes. Um, I am available by phone. By email is my preferred communication because then I can actually write you an answer. And if I'm not in the office, for instance, like this morning, you know, get voicemail. But um, if you email me, that also gives me a chance to uh, Research a process if, if that's what you need, and get back to you with um, some solid information. Yes. Another question. Um, yes. 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 question. We had a bid that we were bidding on, and we needed a DBE. So we had a vendor that was a DBE, also a UBE. So the goal was a two percent goal. You know. Mm -hmm. So if it's the same vendor, does that mean we have to make it four percent? No. 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 It's still it's so, still a 2% so, goal, right? Okay. And the, the percentage goal is based on the amount of that contract. So if it was a $100,000 contract, then $2,000 would be devoted to whatever that contractor so if they were asked, So if they were asking, they wanted both DB and UDB, we could use one and still keep that 2%. Mm -hmm. okay. if, if they don't have, if they don't say UDBE, 2% and DBE 2%. If they just want you to find one, um, then you find a firm that is either or. And basically, if you are a member of those four groups, woman owned, black owned, Asian Pacific, or Native American owned, you are both kind of because everybody goes in as a DBE, a disadvantaged business. And then because of your gender or national origin, you fall into the UDBE. So you actually are both if you are a UDBE. Okay, wait a minute. Go ahead. Because they had two forms within this bid. One, they wanted all your DBE information, and the other one, all your UDBE information. So I did double same thing. So the estimator not asked, okay, how much do I include in my bid? 2% still, of course, or less. Yeah, so if they were a DBE, say if it was a Hispanic business. That is a DBE, but if it is a woman-owned business, they're a UDBE. So you know, I would assume that yeah, you you're probably right doing both forms, but you probably could have just put in if it was a UDBE, you just filed the UDBE form. Yes. Well, there are two partners. One of them is Hispanic, the other is woman. Uh, they have to be 51% 51 51 owner of the business okay. and. Um, be the decision maker. Okay. So um, when when the DBE um, application goes in, not only do we have to have tax records and other things, but then um, an investigator investigator comes down and does a site visit, and they look at the process, they look at the business, they look at records to make sure that if that the woman-owned business is, is it in name only, or do they really sign all the checks? Do they really sign the contracts? Do they really do those kinds of things? Um, and because the state's budgets are so tight, um, I have volunteered and I'm now a site investigator. So I can come to the local areas so the DBEs don't have to wait for Sacramento to send somebody down here. So I, I'm one of the investigators that, that does this. So yeah, um, so that's what we kind of look at. 